So um, um, it started off uh, investigating the Adani mining area. And of course, you know, they're going to be mining um, coal in this area here over the top of the Great Artesian Basin and they're really important um, uh, springs nearby, the Dungmabula Springs. And um, it's very possible that when they use explosives to crack open the coal so they can dig it out, that that's going to crack the um, uh, rock base that covers the Great Artesian Basin there and their polluted water is going to possibly, probably, maybe go into the Great Artesian Basin because coal mines need an extraordinary amount of water um, to, to safely mine coal you have to keep the coal wet otherwise it could um, catch on fire. So um, the problem with that up in the north of um, Australia is that there's a wet season and there's a dry season. And in the dry season, the rivers are dry. There's not a drop of water in them except for a few puddles here and there, yeah? So um, where is Adani going to get their water from during the dry season. Now they're leaching off water from um, uh, one of the main rivers there and making a big dam, fair enough, but that's also removing water from the uh, um, cattle industry, the agriculture there, and uh, it's very possible that this dam won't contain as much water as they need anyway, so it's very possible they're going to be taking water out of the Great Artesian Basin, which could uh, affect the springs, because the water level of the Great Artesian Basin is, is diminishing so much now because of so many um, uh, industries taking water out of it, including agriculture and the cattle industry as well as mining. Um, so uh, the, the water level is lowering and springs are now drying up. They're, they're not bubbling up to the surface. So the first question that some people would ask was, mm. where's the evidence for this? I oh. know you've been reading scientific papers and mm listening to experts and yeah. people on the ground. Yeah. Do you want to tell us about some of your sources of knowledge? Um, oh, uh, there's a lot of material online. Um, I've spoken to some people who's, uh, who are academics, uh, you know, and researching the Great Artesian Basin. Mm. Yeah. And what about... Um, Aboriginal knowledge holders, people who know about these ancient mm. springs. Yeah. Okay, well, up until now, I've been in disguise because I didn't want to be labelled a greenie up there. So I haven't um, uh, joined any, um, any of the groups and uh, I've just kept a very low profile as, you know, a sort of ditzy, white-haired old lady. The first time I went up there, I had my daughter and two grandchildren with me. And my two grandchildren are very cute. My daughter is very beautiful. And I'm very capable of being very ditzy. So, um, you know, we got to talk to people up there who were involved in the mines. We were able to access uh, places and you know all that without being labelled asshole greenies. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'm pretty sure that that disguise is going to drop fairly soon. Mm. 
Yeah. Or see that you get, you don't know. I mean, they could have uh, Googled me, and if they Googled me, they discovered that I'm an environmental artist. So that that would um, blow my cover. But um, I don't know. I think I think uh, you know to be associated with with uh, a, a greeny organisation would have been problematic. Yeah, I for agree my, for my field work. Yeah. So I'm getting the message, mm. and I'm taking it on board personally for my own work that it's really important that we approach these questions mm. as ourselves. Yeah, true. Yeah. As, as the mm. child within us, almost. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Not to be too Pollyanna about it, mm. but to come in as intelligent, yeah. Um, yeah. open. Yeah. Because even to say, not that I am, even if you say you're a scientist, mm. For some reason, scientists become baddies. Yeah, true. So we just come in as people. Mm, yeah, yeah. And one of the very strong motivations to actually go there and take photographs and do drawings and so on is to be a witness for everyone. Not everybody in Australia has the um, time, energy, and opportunity to do what I do, which is to jump in the four-wheel drive, I uh, hide in Rockhampton and, uh, you know, go charging across with my grandchildren in the back seats going, are we there yet? Are we there yet? <laughs> um, to, to do this sort of thing. And the same with the Murray River work that I've done. Not everybody can go to the Murray River and actually see what it's like, the beauty of it, the... the majesty of it, the, you know, the absolute integral um, importance of it to the environment and what happens when there is a, a flood, what happens when there is a, a millennium drought, mm. what happens to the river when it gets infected with blue-green algae, you know, um, and what happens when there's a fish killed. Not everybody can go there, so I go there as a witness in my work is a witness, yeah.